Hey folks, uh, this lesson is connecting intercepts and linear factors. So the intercepts of quadratics, the parabolas, you guys, and then there's linear factors hidden inside these quadratics. So for example, you guys, oops, not yet. So how are the x-intercepts of a quadratic function uh, and the linear factors related? So they're the same, we'll find out in this lesson. So recall, you guys, the x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis. So here's a picture right here. So this would be the x-intercept right here. This is the y-intercept where crosses the y-axis, but this is the x-intercept. So anywhere where a graph crosses the x-intercept, so this, this quadratic has two x-intercepts right here, and then later we'll be doing graphs like this, but on when you get a graph that looks like this, this graph would have three x-intercepts right there, okay? So x-intercepts are where the graph crosses the x-axis, all right? And so when we're graphing a quadratic that's in this form right here, you guys, this is called intercept form, by the way. When it's in this form, then the x-intercepts are, we set this equal to 0, and we go plus p plus p, and we get uh, x equals p, and set this equal to 0, and we get x equals q. So our x-intercepts are p and q, all right? And then so the x-coordinate of the vertex, okay, so um, the x-coordinate or the um, the axis of symmetry uh, is the average of p and q. So we add these two together and divide by 2, and we add uh, average two numbers right here. And, and, and then the y-coordinate of our vertex is we get the whatever we got for the x coordinate we just plug that in right here and right here and solve for y and that'll be our y coordinate and then we just go ahead and graph our our parabola right there okay all right and this is called uh, intercept form when it's written like this i noticed our textbook hasn't hasn't said that in this section but that's what it is because it's easy to get the intercept so let's go ahead and graph this quadratic right here okay so the x intercepts are at negative 4 and positive 2 so remember it's kind of like opposite opposite right there if we set x plus 4 equal to 0 we'd go minus 4 minus 4 and if we set x plus 2 equal to 0 we'd go plus 2 plus 2. So there it is at negative 4 and positive 2. Notice this graph is going by 2's. This book likes to go by other things other than 1. I, I guess because they want to trick you guys. I don't know. Maybe they just don't like teenagers or something. I don't know. Anyway, so uh, here's our rules down here. So uh, the x-intercepts are p and q, so it's at negative 4 and 2 right there. And so the x-coordinate, um, uh, or the axis of symmetry, you guys, so our x-coordinate is at, is at negative 1 because we average the x's, and so negative 2 over 2 is, is negative 1. Okay, so here's negative 1 right here. So here's Here's the axis of symmetry on here. And so let's get our y coordinate. So we're going to plug in negative 1 right there. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Negative 1 minus 2 is negative 3. So our y coordinate is going to be 3 times negative 3 or negative 9. So our vertex is way down here at, one, at negative 1, negative 9. Okay. All right, and then remember, when we graph a quadratic, we go over and up 1 squared, over 2, up 2 squared, over 3, up 3 squared, okay? So from the vertex, so if I go over 1, 1 squared is 1, I go up 1. From the vertex, if I go over 2, 2 squared is 4, so I go up 4 right there. It's at negative 9, so when we go up 4, it's going to be at negative 5 on both sides, okay? When we go over left and right, 2. When we go over 3... Uh, 3 squared is 9. Well, that takes us back to these intercepts right there over 4. Okay, it's at negative 1. So when we go over 4, that's going to take us to negative 5 right there. It's going to go up 4 squared, which is 16. So negative 9 plus 16 takes us all the way up to this 7 right there. Okay, so uh, we get 3, 7 and, and negative 5, 7. Okay, and so we grab that parabola right there. Okay, easy enough, huh? Let's try that with this one. Okay, so the x-intercepts are negative 2 and 5. Okay, so here's negative 2, here's 5. Again, this is going by 2s. Okay, and then uh, let's get our, our x-coordinate. Um, so our x-coordinate uh, is um, uh, negative 2 plus 5, which is 3 over 2, which is 1 and a half. Okay, now these are going by 2s, you guys. So if that's 2, there's 1 right there. So 1 and a half is right there. 3 halves is 1 and a half. All right, so that's our axis of symmetry. So that's where it would fold right in half right there. All right, let's plug in 1 and a half right here. 1 and a half plus 2 is 3 and a half. 1 and a half minus 5 is what? Negative 3 and a half, okay? So when we plug that in, we get 3 and a half times negative 3 and a half. Let's put those uh, as improper fractions. 7 halves times negative 7 halves. 7 times 7 is 49, so it's negative 49 fourths, 2 times 2.
All right, which is negative what? 12 and 1 fourth. So our vertex is way down here at negative 1 and a half and negative uh, 12 and a fourth, okay? All right, so here's a negative 10, here's negative 12, so just a little bit past negative 12, negative 12 and a fourth, okay? All right, and then um, over 1, up 1 squared, all that stuff right there. But we have our intercept right there. It kind of guides us with our parabola right there, okay? All right, so there's our parabola, and... Um, uh, here we're gonna. It says graph each quadratic function and each set of linear of each set of linear factors, and then identify the x-intercepts and the axis of symmetry for the parabola. Okay. Now this, you guys, is the same graph as we just graphed in section B. Okay. So what this is saying is graph the quadratic function. So I'm just gonna graph the old graph that we had. In fact, I'm gonna use my old graph. I just copied and pasted. And you can just reference that. Say, say C section B number one. Okay. So it's the same as uh, the parabola as uh, uh, number one in the last section right there. So it's gonna look like that. And then the second part says right here, and each set of linear factors. Okay. So they want us to graph this y equals uh, x plus 4 and graph this line y equals x minus 2 they're they graph lines you guys okay so let's graph this one do you remember graphing this one we go up here on the y axis at plus 4 so right there I'm gonna put a dot and the slope of this is 1 which is 1 over 1 okay so or 2 over 2 or 3 over 3 just make sure we go up 1 over 1 so I'm gonna put a dot right here up one over one, or or since it's going through four, then it's going to go through negative four right there. See if we go up one over one, or up four over four, okay? And then this dude right here is down here at negative two, okay? So up one over one. And I know that's two, but the up two over two is the same as up one over one, okay? So there's those two graphs right there, okay? So now we've graphed the parabola from the last section right there, and we graphed the two linear functions right there. All right, it says identify the x-intercepts and the axis of symmetry. Now, what they wanted you to realize, you guys, is, is this linear function has the same x intercept as this x intercept right there. Well, it should, you guys. It's there. Here's a line, and here's this line right here. It's the first textbook I've seen us graph the two lines and then uh, the, the parabola right there, but whatever, we can do that. So here's the two lines, and then here's the parabola right there. Okay, so um, uh, so the x-intercepts are still negative 4 and 2 right there, and then the axis of symmetry is right there, uh, x equals negative 1. It's always your x-coordinate of your vertex right there at x equals negative 1. All right, let's try another one here, you guys. All right, so this is the same graph that we just did in section B, number 2, okay? So it's going to give us that same parabola graph right there, okay? Now let's graph y equals x plus 2 and y equals x minus 5. Here's plus 2, and they both have slopes 1. So if we go up 1 over 1, or we can go up 2 over 2, okay? And then this one is down here at negative 5, so right here at negative 5, and then up 1 over 1, or up 5 over 5, whatever, okay? So there they are right there. And then the x-intercepts of the parabola are the same as the x-intercepts of each line, you guys. So here's the axis of symmetry right there. Whoops, yeah, and the x-intercepts are at this negative 2 and positive 5 right there. Okay, so the, even the red line has the same x-intercept as the parabola. And this green line, the x-intercept, is the other x-intercept of the parabola right there. Anyway, so can you see a parabola, you guys, that would intersect uh, this x-axis only once? Okay, it would be like a parabola that goes like that, okay? And so your linear function might go right through that one spot right there. Sometimes a parabola doesn't intersect the x-axis, so it doesn't have any x-intercepts. So you might run across that. I don't. I forgot, you guys. Okay, anyways. All right, so this one says write each uh, uh, function in standard form. So you have a handful of these on your, on your assignment. Remember, standard form is y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So that means just FOIL it out, you guys. So FOIL those guys out, all right, and then distribute, uh, well, clean it up first, and then distribute the 3 through, and there's your answer right there, okay, as long as I did everything right, okay? Same thing right here. FOIL that stuff out, okay? Remember, you guys, when you have conjugates with each other, x plus y times x minus y, here's x plus 2 times x minus 2, we just square the square the two numbers and subtract them because the outers and inners were always cancel each other out. So that's going to give us, whoa, I made a mistake. So x squared minus 4, what was I thinking? This should be a minus 
4 right there. Okay, so uh, 2 squared. So it's x squared minus 2 squared. That's going to change this number right here. So x squared, golly, I can't even multiply 5 times uh, uh, 20. So this should be a 20 right there. Okay, makes sense? All right, sorry about that mistake. I make mistakes all the time, but I won't in class now. All right, you guys, if you are in our class, that would be your assignment. Take care.